say you are what you eat, so I don't eat chicken feet. But I love me some of Grandma's pickled beets. Well, cut it up, put it in the pan, throw it over your shoulder and see where it lands right here in the farmer's kitchen. Maters, taters, beans and corn, the cows in the barn and the sheep's been shorn. Kids in the barnyard chasing Grandpa's chicken. Chicken, chicken. Spices, slices, cuts and dices, gonna slash your grocery prices right here in the farmer's kitchen. Help you grow your garden good with recipes to suit your mood. Try some grub you've never tried before. Smash it with a wooden mallet, gonna educate your palate. Right here in Farmer's Kitchen, in town Farmer's Country Kitchen. We're gonna cook something good now. Hello and welcome to Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen. We're up at the cabin today, but we're going down to the house in just a little while because the temperature's dropping. Yes, it is. And we're losing light. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Too quick. It's early and it's getting cool. Finally, I thought it was never going to get cool. It was cold this morning. The fall is upon us. Thanksgiving's right around the corner. And people have asked us to share with them some recipes, so, like some old-timey stuff and yeah. some alternative stuff. People get tired of the same old thing. We're still going to do a turkey. Got to have a turkey. But we're going to do a ham. Got to have a ham. And, uh, you know, we've done goose. Mm -hmm. Goose used to be the go-to Christmas thing. Christmas is coming. The goose is getting fat. <laughs> Please put a penny. In the old man's hat. If you don't have a penny. A half penny will do. If you don't have half a penny. Then God bless you. <laughs> yeah. Do you remember that song? Yeah, I do I used to sing that, that song. Um, it's that time of year. I blew the horn. You did. Thank you so much. Christmas stuff is up. That's right. And you know what? Most people were really nice and they said, bless your heart, Tim. <laughs> but, you know, and some people said, oh, it's too early. But you know what? It's all... How about the it makes you happy. It makes me happy. Makes I like happy. pretty lights. And Christmas music, I'm sorry. I love it. I do too. And so we've got it on right now in the house and we listen to it all the time. We've only got eight trees up this year. That's right. That's, we're down two. <laughs> <laughs> so anyhow, we're going to show you some alternative things today. Now, very recently we got a calf back. Yum. Now, we did have a few people say, oh, I can't believe you're eating that calf. Well, we have become, as a nation, as a whole, now not everybody, but so far removed from the farm everybody used to raise a calf right the thing is we raised that for meat right we knew it was intended for the table we have no apologies for that and never will this is a show about farming small farming what you can do on a small amount of land now let me tell you something about this calf it was born in april mm -hmm. taken to the processor in october so six months he was pushing 700 pounds was still on milk it's feeding quite a bit of grain. Now this is not grass fed and sweet feed. Right. And he was getting Mr. Crutcher's finest alfalfa. That's right. And he was very healthy. He had a great life. And now we've eaten so much red meat that we're liable to turn into a big hunk of beef. That's right. <laughs> but what do we have left over in the kitchen? Rib roast, standing rib roast. Which now is let's take a look back at the part of the cow that this comes out of. Now, this is bone in. We asked for that hole so we could cut great big old thick ribeyes, thick ribeyes, and, and grill them. Now, when we got down towards the end, we have a section that weighs probably four, four and a half pounds. What we're gonna do with that is make a standing rib roast. And we're gonna flavor that. It's gonna be kind of like prime rib. It's a fairly easy recipe. It takes a little time, but it's worth it's it. It's delicious. It's delicious stuff. We're gonna do that in just a little while. You've got a potato treat mm -hmm. that you can't deny. Yep. It's, it's easy. It's easy, but it's absolutely wonderful. Twice baked potato type yeah. thing. Then we're gonna come back and show you an old fashioned way to take care of your ham. If you wanna do a ham, it's about as easy as you can get. And delicious. And also the goose. But first up, let's round things up, feed the critters, go down to the kitchen, and proceed with our standing rib roast. Yum. Fine eating right there. Now this is what they said couldn't be done, right? Right. He they loves said me. he'll not eat out of your hand. Uncle Milty, he loves you. He's precious, isn't he? I think, is he your favorite? He is my absolute favorite. Look at that cute face. Yeah, he's got a cute face. <laughs> Look at him fighting over that bucket. <laughs> our girls are so healthy and Mama Mia, just might 
She is huge. She is huge. She might have three. Wow. She is big now that you mention it. We kind it. of spoil them. You know, Janine was saying you don't want them too fat. <laughs> they all look like babies look to me. They pretty healthy. I think all of them have uh, the babies in their belly. Are, are in the motherly oh, way. I got no more. And we got one little ram that uh, is growing up, and he's going to be the active male in this group for a the while. The king. The king. All right, you know what? It's getting cool. It is. Let's go cook. Okay, I'm starving. Well, I'm glad Uncle Milty got his snack for the night. And he precious. Bless his heart. He's precious. Yeah, you know, they've been spoiled, Mr. Crutcher's alfalfa. I'm taking a little olive oil. We talked about this meat right here. It's fantastic. I've never had a steak like this Looks before. Looks amazing. This is all that's left. Here's a picture of what we had the other day. Now, when we get our stuff back from the processor, it looks just like store-bought. They label it. They ask us how they want them to cut it, and we tell them, and they have very specific. comes in a package. It's ready to go. Labeled? Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to take this, and I'd say, I'd say five pounds, and that's probably perfect. So what we're going to do is take some salt, pepper, and garlic. Now, I talked to a steak guy. He owned a steak restaurant. Mm -hmm. He knows steak better than anybody. Right. And I asked him, I said, this was a long time ago. I said, come on, what's, the, what's your secret thing? He said, farmer, he said, it's salt, it's pepper, and it's garlic. When you're doing a steak, really that's all you need. Go a little bit heavier on the salt, maybe two parts of salt, one part of pepper and garlic, and you've got something good. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to season this liberally. First thing you gotta do is set your oven 375. Okay. We're, gonna We're good. We're, We're ready on that front. I'm gonna go ahead. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get a really hot skillet, put a little bit of olive oil in it. Then I'm gonna just quickly seal each side, seal all that flavor in. I'm gonna get real good and hot. I mean hot. And I don't want to cook it through and through. Just up. just sealing it up. Let's get a good hot skillet. Sear this real quick. Pop it in the pan in the oven, 375 degrees for one hour. We're gonna cook okay. it. Now, I'm gonna be safe because I want this, to, I would hate to make, turn this into a pie roast. Right. I don't want it, I don't want it brown. We I like it kind of rare. So I'm gonna set this for 135. Okay. Cook it for an hour, turn the oven off, and let it set for up to three hours. Now, if you wanna do this, you can get one of these for 10 bucks, just about anywhere. Right. Now I'm going to stick this in between the bone. I don't want it touching the bone because that bone will generate heat coming out of the edges. Right. I'm going to go in between the bones, right into the meat, and I want to make sure we don't get over 135, 140 because we want it rare. Right. Yum. So that's what we're going to do. Let's go sear it. A little more. Remember a little mixture? It smells amazing right now. And you can mix some of that and set it aside. It's already got that... that uh, Prime rib smell yeah, along it with does. this, doesn't it, with the rosemary and thyme? You don't need a lot of that. Just a little bit, just a hint of that will work really well. Now we're going to open up our pan over here. All right, so now, before we get started, I'm going to put a little bit of beef broth in here. Okay. Yeah. Can't go wrong there. Now that's going to catch these drippings. Oh my goodness. Can I have a little bit for my potato too, to mix sure it can. in there? All right. A little bit more of our seasoning. We're going to season that appropriately. We're going to take a little bit of this better than bouillon, put that in there. This falls under the category, where have we seen this before? But some red currant jelly and some red wine. That smells amazing already. I'm telling you. I want it. I want it. Now that, all that stuff's going to come together along with the juice from this. Mm. It's going to be fantastic. We can drop just a little bit more thyme and rosemary in there. And I'll set this fat side up. Always fat side up. Oh, we gotta wait. We gotta wait it's an hour. It's a couple hours. Oh, yeah. And this farm, if you will, at this point, we cook for an hour. Do you wanna okay. pop that in? Right. Let me get the temperature gauge in. In between the ribs, where's the rib? All right, let's pop that in. All right, now, in that oven, we have three potatoes baking. That's right. She's got a little trick up her sleeve. You've all done it, but right. she has a little twist to it, which is awful good. 
But this show is about alternative ideas for Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. Now you've seen the trash can turkey. A lot of people have really liked that Good idea. Turkey. But not too long ago, we were videoing with somebody and they told us about the old fashioned way to do the ham, which I heard about when I was a kid, but right. I've never done it. Putting the pig to sleep. Yeah, you hear that. Basically, you take <laughs> your ham and you prepare it, you put it in water, you put it in a cooler, and it maintains that temperature for hours it's and hours amazing. and hours. So, here's an alternative idea for Thanksgiving. Putting the pig to sleep. That's right. Right now. So, what we're gonna do today is we're gonna put this pig to sleep, okay. is what they call it in the old fashioned days. People used to do this in a lard can, really? like that back there. They used to take it and put it in a lard can. The whole point of the thing is to keep it in the pot, so okay. you will have to have something that you can with do with the, the water pot. still. With the water. Really? Okay. Now you want to have enough water to cover that pig, uh, you know, three or four inches okay. at least. So we got our water starting to heat up. Let's go ahead. and I'm gonna let you put that in there. All right, now here's what I'm gonna do, because I can. Okay. I'm gonna take some pineapples with some pineapple juice. That will not Yum. harm the taste of that. Now we're gonna take some brown sugar. That won't hurt anything. And it's good for you, I heard. Mm -hmm. Sugar's good. All the people at the brown sugar factory say it's really good for you. We're gonna take your ginger soda. See, now we're getting it covered up. Oh, yeah, it's beginning to boil. Now we're going to take some cloves. Have you seen the price of cloves lately? Seriously? Expensive, yeah. I mean, we may have to... <laughs> Grow cloves? <laughs> I don't think we can do that. <laughs> and we're going to bring that to the boil. Now, keep in mind, that after you place this in here, we've got two towels now in the cooler. Mm -hmm. Now, tomorrow, 12 hours from now, be careful. When you open that back up, that water's going to be hot enough to burn you. Really? When it's in the cooler and wrapped mm -hmm. up like that, it really is. So I'm seeing a little activity here. We're getting some bubbles. Now we have sufficiently got our ham up to temperature. It smells good. That is good. Now I am gonna have a two-handed person do this. I want you to be careful because oh, wow. this is very dangerous. Okay. I have seen, you did this one time. <laughs> Boiled my foot. Yeah. I'll be careful. I saw my father hurt himself like this one yeah. time. So be really, really careful. Let's go ahead okay. and put the top on. This is gonna go into the cooler. Look at that, clothes are down. Now, that's not a expensive cooler. No. It's just a typical cooler, one you can shut and seal fairly good. Right. We got the extra blankets and towels in there for protection, and guess what? We just leave it now? We leave it, we okay. walk away 12 hours like later, that. we come back now. Now again, it's deceiving when you have that wrap around there, the right. cooler on top of there. That water will burn you tomorrow, 12 hours from now. Really? Look where that's sweated. Yeah, it's still a little warm. Yeah, uh, it's gonna be hot. Will it? Can I pick it up? So be very careful. It's warm, but I think I can get it. Yeah, it's still really nice and warm. All right, as we take this wow, off. Wow, that smells good and looks we good. You see the steam rising, and that water is. Is it warm? Yep, it'll burn you. Look at that. Oh, wow. You gonna be able to do it? There we go. Got it. Now look at that. Oh my goodness, it's yeah, steaming. I believe we could eat that right there, but here's what we're gonna do. Yum. Oh, that smells <laughs> delicious. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this, this side down. Okay, now here's how we're gonna finish this thing up. I'm just gonna cut some cross marks in the top here, score this a little bit. I can't believe it's still steaming after all it's that time. It's still steaming. It smells absolutely oh, wow. wonderful. But we're just gonna take a little brown sugar, rub in here. Now we've put a little more moisture down in the bottom of the pan. Now we're gonna take some cloves. If you will, just stick a clove in each little square. Okay. Now this is just to finish things up. 275 for a couple hours. Let's pop this in. Okay. 2.75 for two hours. Let me get to eat. See you in a bit. Now I smell wonderful ham. Lunchtime. You ready to get yes, out? I am. Okay, let's do this. Wow. Oh man. I tell you what, if you will, let's transfer that onto this plate. Look okay. at that. All right, now I took that end off just to show you what we've got here. Wow. 
And now I'm gonna slice. Now, internal temperature. Look how juicy, look wow. at the juice rolling out of the sides of that as I cut it. Go ahead and take that piece out. Let's just try it. I can't I can't hold back anymore. Yeah. Look at that. It's got the smell. Now let's see what the taste. Wow. Being that it's close to Thanksgiving, what are you thankful for, Mrs. Farmer? I'm thankful for you and our, our wonderful children and all the animals. And what are you thankful for? Well, obviously you. I'll be better. And our animals and our grandkids and our children. All our little rugrats. That's right. Who are bigger than us now. I know they are. And older. And they're all doing great, so I'm happy. Everybody's they doing well. They're doing great. Everybody's We're proud of our kids. Yeah. Well, I'm standing right back here shooting right. video right now. The meanest ones here the with us. The meanest one. <laughs> if we get out of control, she just throws right. things at us. You know what? Thanksgiving is a time for family to come together. And it used to be done, not around a turkey, but a goose. We talked earlier about the old song. Very standard, even in this country, up until about 100 years ago or so. It is absolutely rich and delicious. Now it's darker meat, oh, it's good. but when that, when that fat on that bird, I can't even, ex it's hard to explain how right. delicious that is. When that fat renders off of that into that, and then you've got something else you can use to turn the, if you have some new potato or something to turn it over in that, in that goose fat or duck fat. Wow, so let's quit talking about it and take a look at our goose. Now you can find these, they're kind of expensive because they're unusual right. anymore. But try a goose. A goose. The tradition of the goose, especially European. That's what you had at Christmas time. When you read uh, Charles Dickens or anything, they talk about mm -hmm. having Christmas the, the goose. Christmas goose. Christmas is coming. The goose is getting fat. Please put a penny in the old man's I know this one. And people say, oh, it's too greasy. We've gotten away from traditions. They wouldn't have eaten geese if they weren't delicious. Right. This is a domestic goose. Look at this thing. Look at the fat on this thing. They say, oh, it's too greasy. When you break down a turkey versus a goose versus a chicken. There's no more calories, there's no more fat per se, once you cook the fat out, than there is in a chicken or a turkey. What's the difference in taste? Turkey is kind of bland. Mm -hmm. They've been domesticated down and domesticated down. Goose has flavor, rich flavor, not gamey flavor, rich, mild flavor. Right. It is absolutely delicious. The skin, on this goose is so fantastic. Some people say you should pierce the skin to let the fat run out. Other people say it's gonna come out anyway. You might just poke a little hole around the leg or something like that. I'm not gonna do too much puncturing of that. It, the grease is gonna come out. Some people also say to start it breast side down, hmm. cook it at a high temperature for a half hour, and let some of that fat run off. A lot of people say turn it on its side, do this, do that. I have found that if you just take this guy, put the stuffing in it, Leave it breast side up and just let it go. You'll do fine. Now we're ready to stuff this bird. Now I have salt and peppered the inside of the bird a little okay. bit. We have poked three holes, one here, one here, and one in the tail. And we're gonna tie those all together. So if you will. I get the fun job. Stuff that bird. Now this is a automatic side when you're done. I got a big cavity in there. You wanna impress your friends? You wanna really try something different? Go buy you a goose. It is not gamey. I'm gonna repeat, it is not gamey. It is just rich and smooth and beautiful. All right, we're full. Ready to bring all that stuff up together, tie that off. We're just basically closing the cavity of the bird off so all those juices can stay in there. Now, let's take that string and just Tie the legs together just a little bit. All right. Hold everything together. We're a good team, aren't we? Yeah, absolutely. All right, now we're adding oil not because we need oil per se, but we just basically want to make sure that the salt and pepper sticks to the outside of the bird. And the other side's already done. And that is what that's going to look like. Now, for the first half hour, we're gonna get four, 425 in between there. Now we're gonna do this on the big green egg, and there's a reason why, because that flavor imparts such a wonderful, rolls up around that bird, and oh, it crisps up so nice. All right, you wanna put him on? Let's do it. Let's go. Yummy. I've got good news, and I've got bad news. What? 
first of all, it looks delicious. That's the bad news. And it smells delicious. Yeah. It's got to rest for ah. 25 minutes. Why? So I tell you what, let's do. Let's get him out, set him on the okay. platter, let him look all golden beautiful. Let him set a few minutes, and it's time for dinner. All righty. Thanksgiving dinner. Can we eat? You think it's worth the wait? Yes. That looks right. wonderful. It's Thanksgiving. What are you thankful for? I am thankful for you because you're so precious and I'm sweet. And you're such a good cook. And you feed me. What do you think? so sweet. What are you thankful I'm for? I'm thankful for this goose. Okay. And you. Okay. Here, a slice. Ready? Oh my goodness. That is a beautiful plate. Oops. That is we pretty. hit our meat right here underneath this. Oh, how is it? Mm. The richness. That's delicious. No gamey taste whatsoever. So as we start bringing that temperature back up, we anticipate a half hour or so of warming that up, getting it back up to temperature. Meanwhile, you have let your potatoes that you baked earlier get cool during this process. Right. So what are we going to do now? We're going to do a twice-baked potato. So we're just going to peel out the innards of this so we can restuff it. Oh man, that's making my mouth water. Now we're using our bacon. That's right, that I already fried up. some cheese. What else do you have over here? Some horseradish and sour, sour cream, cream. Whipping cream, salt and pepper. Green onions. Can't go wrong with all that. You can put whatever you want in it. A lot of people do different. We'll put cheese on the top. So remember, these have cooled. And, right. You know, it's an already cooked potato, so you have to leave the structure intact. So you're getting enough out to really make some, yeah. put some good stuff together and mash it all up and then put it back in. Okay, I'm going to add some butter. And this is probably two tablespoons. You can put as much as you want. I always overdo it, you know me. Mm. Like salt and pepper. Got some horseradish. Let's put maybe what? Big heaping teaspoon. Mm. Some sour cream. Let's put. Let's see. Now that's an idea we got a while back. We've been putting some horseradish in our in our potatoes. And a little whipping cream always. Oh man. And you can do whatever. People have their own recipes of how they do this. Whatever you want to do. Looks pretty good to me. Just nice and chunky. What do you think? Yeah, perfect. I'm just gonna fill these back up. Some people put broccoli in them and all kinds of. Oh, I mean yeah. mushrooms. Whatever you want to do. Right. Let that melt on the top a little. Oh. Those look pretty good. Though. Some of our. I'm just jamming down bacon. in there. Yeah. Gotta have bacon. Wow, that's not gonna be good. No, nope, it's gonna be terrible. All right, and that's ready to go in the oven when you pull yours out. All right. A few more minutes. Let's get this mess cleaned up, and we'll get her going. Okay. Also tonight, now that skillet that we used a little while ago, we used it to fry bacon. Right. We use it to actually sear our meat. We already got some good juice in there. That'd be good. So all we gotta do is we'll probably take a little bit butter okay and some salt pepper and garlic and boom yeah we got a side all right let's get this cleaned up all right we're gonna take this bad boy out pop the potatoes in look at that yeah I want you to look at that looks good I'm serious, that is a work of art. Look at that piece of meat. Look at the fat, how beautiful. Oh! You want that too, don't I'm you? I'm going to eat that too. Just yeah. look at this. Now, we're coming right down in between these two bones. Hey, we're going to get right way. in the middle. We're going to go right for the middle here. Now, look at that. That looks Just delicious. Just look at that. Now, see how done this is up here? Now, that's that fat layer on top. That's not rare, rare. Oh, look how tender that, looks so that good. is. Look at the color of that meat. Mm. We got a little horse race here too. <laughs> oh, wow. Mm. If you don't have this available to you, go to your butcher. Have it cut. Take it's it home. Delicious. Do what we just did. And let me tell you what. Wow. I don't care who you are. That is unbelievable. I'm going to take one more big bite. Then we'll talk about some other stuff. <sighs> Look what we did. You did good. I'm not done yet. I know you're not. <laughs> I have to stop just for a minute to tell everybody about our Facebook page. Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen Facebook page. Remember, all you have to do is click like. You don't have to ask to be our friend. All you have to do is hit like. Boom, you're our friend. And we get to talk, share recipes. Oh, you have having This mess. It's bad, isn't it? Yes. And if you're looking for more delicious recipes, where might you find them, Mrs. Farmer? TimFarmersCountryKitchen.com. That's correct. Go to TimFarmersCountryKitchen.com, click YouTube, then click subscribe. And that way, every time something new comes out, you'll get it. And one more thing we're thankful for, 
Our Thanks parents. Our, our parents. parents. The best we in the world. Parents. Yeah, we got the best. We're lucky. We have there. the best childhood, best, best parents. So, hey, mom and dad, happy Thanksgiving, everybody, and let's chow on this like Chrome Magnons. Okay. See you next week on Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen. To order a cookbook or DVD of the show, please call 502-319-0487 or email timfarmerck at gmail.com. Special thanks to... CKY Canoe, Kentucky. Furniture World Superstore. Housewarmings. Lodge Cast Iron. Tater Knob Pottery and Farm.